Hello everyone, this is a geek must have. I just got back from the 2019 Makers Fair Detroit exhibition. I managed to take some pictures and videos to show some of the sites and interview some very interesting people. Watch the video to see what Makers is all about. When people ask what my hobby is and I say that I'm a maker, most people give me that same confused look and cock their head to the side, just like my Labrador does when there's a strange noise. So I explain to them, I'm a maker. I build things. I build things that people want that make them happy. Sometimes I build things just to learn how to build things. Everything I build, I keep in mind I'll be showing someone else how. I'm a maker. Well, a maker's fair is a collection of people like me who make things. Electronic things, robotic things, clothing and accessory things, rocket things, power wheel racing car things, wooden, leather, and ceramic things, unusual bicycle things, Things printed on the 3D printers. Things that are artificially intelligent. A legion of Star Wars troopers. And more things than I can even remember. I met and spoke with quite a few interesting people about what they make and how they did it. I did all of these videos and pictures with my trusty JVC Averio GZEX310 cameras which are probably not the best for doing interviews in noisy environments. And trust me, maker's fairs are noisy. That's part of the excitement. I have done my best to edit this material, and I hope that you can enjoy some of the sights and sounds of Maker Fair Detroit 2019. Yeah. You can um, control okay. the, the curve for each each um each factor. So you can um, limit your amperage draw until you get up to a certain speed. Um, it is it's a very neat program. It's not exactly the most intuitive thing because um, we wanted to say, oh, we want to draw 80, 80 amps max. So we put 80 amps into the program, and then we were drawing. It wasn't letting us draw. Yeah. <laughs> So it wasn't exactly a one to one conversion in the How long did it take you guys to build this thing? About six weeks last summer. Six weeks. Anything unusual about it? It's, uh, it's a dragon. <laughs> what broke first? What what broke first? Something always breaks. Uh, well, this year some stuff that has broken was it goes to the left and the sound wasn't completely working. <laughs> and we also repainted the wings this year. Oh, okay. And where are you guys from? We're from in Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor? Yeah. Are you part of a group or? Uh, yeah, we're part of 830 The Rat Pack, a robotics team from First Robotics. Excellent. Uh, what is it? It's a it's our basketball thrower. <laughs> this is actually our robot from this year's first competition. So this year was called Destination Deep Space, and the whole goal of it was to put these cargo balls and discs are about this wide had a giant hole in the center on top of a, what was it, six and a half, seven foot tall cargo ship? And, uh, all that's just what it is. Um, yeah, so we have these rollers right here. Um, 
So this it takes the ball when it rotates clockwise and it brings it in there. Um, and then these also close. Uh, we can't do that right now because we're doing the pressure is closed. But um, so for the hatches, these come down and these close right here. So we grab the hatches have a hole inside of them. So when we put the hatches on, these will open up and grab them from the inside. And then to place those, we have an arm that comes down. Hydraulics like that. Yep. Um, yeah. Motors so, and hydraulics. Right? So we have the motors to move the arm up and down, and then hydraulics to actuate these. Yep. Um, and then so by moving this whole arm, we have an elevator to do that, a two stage elevator. Yep. So we have a two stage elevator with the carriage inside of it, which is how we're able to get all the way up to six and a half, seven feet tall. Um, and then that's how we're able to score at the top and get all six cargo, or all 12, no, six cargo balls in there and six hatch panels on the ride. How long did it take to build? We had six weeks to build it, so the first two were the practice robot, or first week was designing, week and a half after was designing and then building the practice robot, tweaking it, and then the rest of the time was building the competition robot, and then tweaking it, and tweaking the practice robot, and then just making improvements and coding. That was six weeks, how many people? Uh, we had about 21 students. Yeah, 21, 21 students. students, okay. So where are you guys from? Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan? Oh, okay. Now, us and eight other teams are in the Community First Center. So. When, uh, is the competition done already or is it coming up? Yeah, so the first Saturday in January every year is when the competition is announced or what the year's game is. You have six weeks to build it, week zero, which is a week off, and then eight weeks of competition, which includes districts, states, and then world's competition. Excellent. And then all throughout, like, now, the summer up through... January's off-season events, you know, fun events, all yep. that kind of stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. No. Oh, one more try. She almost had it. Oh, run away ball. Hold on. Got it. Throw it back to those guys. Nice. Good job. All right. Up you go. That's what I like to see. All right. Throw Walker, nice to meet you. My name's John. John. I'm doing this for uh, Geek Must Have. It's a YouTube channel. Oh yeah, I've seen it. Okay. Uh, can I interview you? Sure. Just yeah. a second. How long did it take you to build the shark? Oh, uh, it's really took uh, about a couple months. But the base of it looks like uh, electric wheelchair. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. This is like the serious part of this. It's a silly project, right? But yeah. The serious part is that electric wheelchairs go in the dump all the time because there's no market for used ones. So, uh, but you can pick, I got that frame for 50 bucks. Really? On an auction. And you pick it up, it's got everything. The motors are uh, medical grade. They hardly ever anything goes wrong with these things. How about the rest of the mechanics for the body? The body is made out of PVC heat, heat molded pipe. I just discovered that it's it's like super easy. I've to seen many I've seen many videos yeah. on that. And then the uh, the skin is a uh, medium density EVA foam. Excellent. That's my first foray into that, and it's it's horrible. It's so fun to watch, but my it's horrible, but it's such a good project. Yeah. Thank you.
Alright, this is the, uh, what's the name of this booth? This is AWS Welding. Okay. And purpose is to promote well welding, obviously, right? Yeah, obviously. So we're here today kind of just showing people how welding is needed oh, sorry. and how we're <laughs> right. going to need welding so in the future. You know, by 2020, we're going to need 220,000 okay. so, new welders, you know, with people retiring, with people, right. you know, dropping out. You know, younger generations okay. not stepping up to trade jobs. We're kind of here just promoting how great it is to be in a trade job. I thought that trades were kind of looked down upon in favor of higher technology. Oh yeah, absolutely. So with uh, you know robotic welding coming into play, we we still need people to be able to operate those uh, machines, to be able to diagnose them for any problems. So you know, there's a whole lot of different fields. Not only that, but you can't send a robot on the water to do welding. You can't, you know, there's a lot of different things that we need actual human hands to be able to do this. So it'll be a synergy between robots and humans. Exactly. Yep. Okay. It'll be All a right. great mix. All right. Well, great. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank So what is We the People? We the People is a farming initiative whose mission is to break the cycle of incarceration and while using farming as the vehicle. So agricultural to help inmates? Agricultural to, to provide economic development and also some training and some support so that we can be very intentional in the ways in which we try to help those change the soil in their lives. And uh, how long have you been doing this? Oh, well, I, I put my first vegetable seed in the ground in 2014. <laughs> Prior to that, I couldn't even spell vegetable. Did that first seed grow? That first seed actually grew. That's good. Yeah. Mine didn't. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, where are you guys located? So, we're located in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Okay. Uh, and we currently have about a half an acre of land that we're leasing. And the food that we grow winds up at about seven restaurants in Ann Arbor and four in Ypsilanti. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank So what is your group? We're Girltastic. We're what? a middle school robotics team sponsored by Girl Scouts of Southeastern Michigan. Oh, so where are you located? We're in West Winfield, Michigan, but we're comprised of girls all over Metro Detroit. Okay. And how long have the girls been working on that robot? This was our robot from last year, so we've made a couple changes too, but this was our tournament robot from last year. And they worked on it for probably about three months. And then they'll probably be stripping it down and doing a new robot once we get our new challenge that comes out in about three weeks, right here. Who gives the challenges? The challenges comes from First Robotics, and so they get, last year's theme was on space, and so they had a moon lander, yep. and so these are minerals, gold and silver minerals out there. And this year's theme will be cityscape, so we don't know what it's going to be about. We're imagining like something large, like making towers yes. and skyscrapers, but we won't know until we get the actual challenge, and then huh. we'll have a whole game where we get different points for doing different things. How many kids in the scout troop? Well, we come from many different scout troops, so we have nine girls on our team this year. We have five girls last year. Okay. Excellent. All grades six through eight. Excellent. Although last year we were almost all sixth graders, one seventh graders. So we're a little bit more spread out with sixth, seventh, and eighth graders this year. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.
What group are you with? Uh, I'm with I3 Detroit. Okay. Um, that's, the big, that's the big yeah. hacker space. We're a, we're a local makerspace, hacker space in Ferndale, Michigan, uh, right on the Detroit border. Uh, and we're actually expanding. So we have a Patternosity campaign going right now to crowdfund our expansion. And the Michigan Economic Development Council is going to be matching our grant if we can raise such and such money. So. So metal is a material that you can use now with a 3D printer? Yeah, I mean, it's right now it's, it's very much on the industrial scale. Um, in my professional life, that's what I do as a metal additive. It's, it's really expensive, it's really time consuming, primarily in aerospace and in biomedical and in defense right now. Be like a metal foam on the outside that your bone grows into, and kind of a bond. Um, personally, I do like commercial aviation, so like Airbus and GEs, going to the world. My most recent tooth was 3D printed while I waited. Yes, so it's actually a huge <laughs> application in, in uh, dentistry. And if you get an Invisalign, so Invisalign is like like these parts are, are SLA, so it's like a, a liquid resin that you, that you yes. print with light. Um, Invisalign and all those different things were actually it's by far the largest volume 3D printed thing that exists in the world, and that's been going on for you know 15 years basically. But that, that kind of crept up on everyone. It didn't, you know, right now the, the goal in like industry is to get these parts from just prototyping and tooling and fixtures into actual serial production of these parts. So you know, and that, that's that's what I do professionally. How do you make sure you know printing one part? It's not hard. To make sure that when you print you know, hundreds or thousands of parts over multiple years, multiple machines, different materials, you get the same part every time, it's not going to fail and cause your Boeing plane to crash. Do you think SLA is going to be the next thing? Um, SLA is getting a lot better, but I think it's actually like a process in need of uh, an application. I mean, like all the, the, the soles of shoes, like of sneakers right now, are like the killer app. I, I don't know if I buy that. I noticed that your Persa printer yeah. is all black. It is. Can you order them that way? Yeah, it's murdered out. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's stock. I mean, you, I mean, you can. I've print only them seen them in orange. I, I think, yeah, you, you can get them in black and orange. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Would I have customized it with black? Like maybe. It's pretty yeah. <laughs> so this is part of the i3 booth. Yep. So all of us in this area are all from the i3 area. Okay. And what's your name? I'm Dan Madrid. Okay, Dan, and you do wood. I do, yeah, wood. So I do some handmade wood uh, cutouts, like, and then I also do laser cut and depth maps for uh, various lakes. So these are the laser cut depth maps? Yep. So all these are the laser cut bathymetric maps. So I've done Lake Superior, and I've got various other ones as well. And then uh, all of these are hand, hand cut. Hand cut? Yep. So you're an artisan as well. I try to be. Okay. <laughs> I try to be, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Hi there, what's your name? Hi, my name's Ness. Uh, I'm the zone coordinator at the Kiln Zone at I3. So they do ceramics? Yeah, we do ceramics there. I teach classes too. As well as 3D printing and carpentry and metalworking. Oh yeah, yeah, we're a whole bunch of different stuff. Excellent. And uh, can you tell me about some of these? Um, so this was a project I did. It was uh, I did a commission for one, and they were just so much fun that I just kept making them. <laughs> Does that happen often? Yeah. <laughs> Good. You do custom work and people? I, yeah, I do custom work. I like to take custom orders all the time. So if somebody wanted a special set of cups for an event or something? Yeah, I did some really good ones for the holidays last year. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. You're part of the I3 crowd, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. What's your name? Uh, James Turner. James, I'm John. And what do you do here? Uh, so I'm actually here representing a toy company, uh, Red Lava Toys. Um, what we do is we actually so we make these ourselves. Um, we, at I3, we have a, uh, a CNC department. Uh, in the CNC department, we have a Haas, uh, we have a plastic injection molding machine, um, a vinyl cutting machine, 
and vacuum press, all these different, you know, all these different tools. So we start from the ground. So I'll just show you this chest piece to give you a good idea. So we mold each individual piece. So the chest piece, the arms, the legs, the head. And then each piece has grunts. So the chest here has these, uh, these appendages here. And then it, for instance, inside the head, there's a rubber grommet there. So you pop the head on. And then when you go to pop it off, it makes a sound. It's like ASMR. You just listen. It makes a really nice popping sound. Put it all back on. Um, we also mold some other stuff too, so we got capes for each character. So you pop your head off, pop a cape on. <laughs> a cape, excellent. <laughs> pop the head back on. Yeah, any Minecraft character, you know, you gotta have your cape. Right. Put all the, pop all these back on while, while I'm here. Pop a cape on, fly around. So you could take a number of these and mix and match the parts. Yes, yeah, you can mix and mash them. Um, each of them comes with a little goodie bag, which includes a uh, different colored pickaxe and sword. Uh, you get two real artificial diamonds. And then you also get this. Now this is a special type of plastic. The owner of the company, he, uh, he's the department head for the CNC department at I3. Uh, his job title for the past 10 years has been Mad Scientist. It says it on his W-2s. I believe him, I've seen it. Um, and so he designed this, uh, he actually found this mix of plastic, put it under a bright light for 30 seconds, and this thing glows all night long. Um, and we also do custom skins as well. So if any of you guys play Minecraft, uh, you can actually go to our website. We're not official. We're not official Mojang or Minecraft license or any of that. Um, but you can take your character skin, upload it to our website. You can actually order your character that you play as in the game. It's pretty cool. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. You're obviously you part of the uh, the uh, I three community. I3. Okay. Yep. And they do leather work in addition to just everything else. Yes, we do. We do a lot of leather work. I'm there four days a week. Okay. Do uh, you have a lot of people who want to learn leather working? We have a few, and then others who just need like something made real quick. And, and we help them out with that. So you can have people who come in and commission things? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There are people that work at I3 that take commissions. We're artists, after all. We gotta survive. You have to pay the bills. Yes, we do. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy your day here. You too. We were noticing how when you think, you look at it so that can easily go around his arm. But it's not how long it is. How we made the car. I have nothing. No, he should always have finished. He's probably not. No, he is. He's no, he is. He is. But 
because he kept thinking he was. Okay. <laughs> Bounce on them. Those actually pin the LEDs down so they're 
nice and stable. So the LED goes into your 3D uh, 3D printed mount. Yes. And then the mount goes into the garbage can. Yep. And the they pretty much survived. Yeah. It's much better now. Normally the face lasts about two to three hours before something breaks, and then we just had to work with what we had left. Like we put eye patches and stuff on yep. them before. But uh, this year with the mounts, it's working really well. Do you do competitions with other groups, or? Yes, we do. In fact, well, it's not behind me anymore. But okay. the competition bot is probably on the field behind me. All right, that was the one I. Okay. Competing. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.
showed the prototype product at the um, Maker Fair in New York City on the September of last year. That's when we showed it. We began sales in May of this year at the Bay Area Maker Fair, and this is the first time uh, we've been in Detroit. We're very happy with the venue, and loving Maker Fair Detroit, and we're selling it here, and people seem to be liking it and engaging with it. Where do you do your manufacturing? In our home. In your house, I love it. In our house, and, yes. uh, we have We have a laser in the basement that cuts the holes. Oh, nice. And then we have a line vendor that makes all the really nice clear bath yep. that's in the plastic. And then when you're um, getting back to the product, when you're done with it, you put the cover on and it fits in a backpack or you can hang it on the wall yep. or you can throw they it on make, the They nice for a display case. Absolutely. Yep. They display very well. It's really a solution that's both protected, portable, and really, really nice looking. So that's been attractive for a lot of people. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, what's your name? Uh, I'm Michael Plouffe. From? Uh, from Ypsilanti. So, Tinker Tech here is a maker space based in Ypsilanti. Okay. Uh, so, in addition to providing people with tools, we also uh, sell electronic components. So, all the demonstrations that are on the table here are made with components that are available and in stock in our store. So, something that's hard to find now is the demise of Radio Shack, but we have it uh, over at our shop. So everything here uh, is made from those components. All the uh, enclosures and uh, boards are uh, laser cut on our uh, laser cutter that we have in the shop. We've got laser cutter, 3D printer, electronic lab tools, uh, and we also offer workshops and classes on learning how to make things, how to program things. So you do, how to class, use all you our do tools. classes as well? Yes, yep. Oh. And uh, so uh, among the things that we have here, we just finished this one. This is a little bit of a survey. Uh, so unlike Google that just takes your information without asking, uh, we let you put it in with buttons and switches in a very cumbersome manner to find out what sorts of things you'd like to find in a maker space. So dialing in with uh, our switches here, we indicate that we want some uh, tools, maybe classes, or maybe we're interested in electronic retail. We've got a legend for our location so we can figure out uh, if we've got people who are kind of close by or coming from out of state. Uh, we're kind of interested in uh, gender and age uh, distribution because we want to see you know, what is the representation of people that were uh, coming to the table and kind of relatively how experienced people are in, the, in making. And then uh, we can log all that through nesting cards and we'll take a look at that data later on. The basic survey form done with hardware. Uh, a, a basic survey form done difficult, uh, in a difficult manner. Yes. <laughs> Protecting your privacy if you're covering your uh, uh, collection of data. Make it more difficult. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. What's your name? My name is Trev Becker. I'm here with the uh, University of Michigan Dearborn Rocket Team. And uh, the big rocket that's behind me, the two-stager. Pardon me? This rocket behind me, the yes, two-stage two rocket. Um, so not quite a two-stage. It's called boost and dark configuration. So on that bottom section there, once the motor burns out, that part drops off, and the other part continues on power towards Apogee. We actually have these fins here, deployable fins. So once that bottom section drops off, these come out and deploy, and keep the rocket stable as it continues on power towards Apogee. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, what size engine does the main, the main rocket use? So the engine we use, we're not allowed to make our own fuel at school, so we use a, a vendor, um, off-the-shelf fuel, Aerotech. This year it's a solid fuel ammonium perchlorate, um, 90 millimeter diameter, about 15, uh, 15 pounds of propellant this year. Um, to launch that six.
60, 65 pound rocket to 10,000 feet. Oh, 10,000 feet. So yeah, the, the goal for our competition is to get as close as you can to 10,000 feet. And we ended up launching uh, that rocket to 11,572 feet. So a little bit off, but still pretty close. I assume it has telemetry in it? And yes, we have telemetry throughout the whole entire vehicle. We have, um, this was our payload this year. We have a GPS unit up here to track the rocket and we'll know where the upper section goes. On the lower section, we have the same GPS unit to make sure we know where the bottom section is as well. Um, they're rated for a few miles. The bottom section ended up landing about a mile from the launch site. This upper section landed about four and a half miles away from the launch site. So, yeah, pretty pretty far away. So, yeah, you have to have some pretty good, uh, you know, GPS units and stuff like that. Did you have video on this unit? Pardon me? Do you have video on this unit? Yes, we do. We have video. Um, so, the, the shrouds actually broke off, but we had cameras that were coming out of the rocket, Raspberry Pi cameras, um, to get launch video. And we have video throughout the entire flight. Um, I don't know where it's at right now, but we do, we do have video for the flight, yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I think that's a little more detailed than your Well, hold on, what's, all right, yeah, it's 749 for the kit. Yeah. I was just making sure it didn't show just like 300 bucks. I'm like, no, 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 that's just for that. Yeah, but no, it's, it's, we try to do it so it's reasonably priced. Yeah. You know, we want, we want it so, to give everyone the ability to, you know, really get into it and everything else, so. So how many printers in the printer farm now? Right now, yeah. in the farm, it's 500. And then plus, in all the offices and everything else, each employee has their own printer. So in a crunch, if we ever needed to, we have a total of 1,000 printers going on at any given time. And this is in that new location now? Yes, this is in our new location in Prague. Basically, yep. we went from a very small um, office park to a full-on factory building right now. There's six floors now that we, we basically have the entire building. When you started, you only had the first couple of floors and then you took them all over? building? Yes, we only had two floors, but we knew that you know, eventually we would go into it. We just didn't think we would go into it this fast. Right. So. And the multi-filament head that's on this one here, is that something new? Um, it's something that we've been messing around with for a few years now. We had the multi-material version one. Right, so, and then we ha came out with the second one. And so what it is, it's, you have the unit up on here. Think of it as a big selective, right? So you have five filament options here. So when you have your file, the model that's designed for multi-material printing, it's done in sections. So you put it into a slicer and you assign each section a spot on here, up to five, right? So then what it will do is it will print it layer by layer. If you want to, this would be a good example, right? So on this one, it would do all the yellow, it will change over, wipe the nozzle, load the blue, print the blue section, unload, load up the pink, print it. And it would do that layer by layer by layer. How does it clear out the filament that was in there before it doesn't switch? It unloads it into a uh, purge block. Oh, okay. And someone walked off. <laughs> awesome. But it's part of the model itself, the way the model is sliced. You assign each section to a spot on here, 
so that's how it knows how to do it. So but say like you, color one, color two, color three. If you look right there on the back of there is your slice, um, it's, it's, you call it a waste tower, right? So it will load and unload it uh, every time so you have a nice bright color. We have two options within Slicer where you can set it to wipe into the infill of the, the model that you're printing. So that will save a little bit, but then also what you need to do is um, wipe into the object and that will give you the ability to say if I'm printing this, right? And I want to make this line, but I know I'm going to spray paint him gold, mm -hmm. right? So I don't care what color the plastic is going to be. I can print this and I can use this object as the infill. So all that material that would go to wasting would use it to print For this. Yep. Excellent. So it helps reduce that amount of wasted material. I had a ball at the 2019 Makers Fair in Detroit. I went to the very first one in Detroit 10 years back, and to tell the truth, there are a few things I miss. Huge, giant, fire-breathing dragons. The Makers Merchandise Tent, where you could buy kits and let them sit around for years before you build them. By the way, I will have a video very soon of the very first kit I bought 10 years ago. 
And the last thing, more in varied cosplay, not just Star Wars Troopers. I'm glad that Makers is still around and these Maker Fairs held all over the world are still popular. If you were entertained a bit, learned something, or maybe even just laughed a little, press that like button. Leave me a comment with suggestions, requests, or even criticisms. I try to respond to any and all comments. Show your support for this channel and these videos by subscribing to my channel. Every subscriber I get makes me smile just a little bit more. And I have a personal and a channel goal of 500 subscribers by the end of this year. Please help and be one of those subscribers. I have a companion blog at geekmusthave.com where I ramble on about all things technical. Stop by and visit me. I'll leave my email in the description below if you want to send me a message. Thank you and have a good one.